Good morning, everybody. Um, so this week we have some really exciting stuff going on here at church. Um, we are getting ready to uh, do our Easter outreach. There's a drive-by parade type thing like they had at Christmas time. We're doing it again in the park for Easter with the community, and we're going to have a display. So if you would like to help make a display, that would be awesome. And um, during the week, if you have time to come in and help pack the bags so that we have, uh, there's like a little lesson and some prizes to give out to families. If you are able to come in and help pack those, we would greatly appreciate that um, at any time that works for you. Um, this Tuesday night at 630, we have ladies night, and we are going to be making Easter cards to give to residents at the nursing home so that they feel loved and um, feel God's presence near them. And Thursday morning at 9 a.m. we have prayer. Men's breakfast is Saturday at 8 a.m. So men should come out for that. And then next Saturday, not the 20th, but the 27th, keep that in mind, we are having the youth lunch. Finally, being able to get together in person and uh, get to know each other and start to Worship God, and that's what we're going to do right now through the song. So, if you guys want to stand up and sing with us.
honor you every day. In Jesus' name. Well, this will help me 
with my step-by-step -step process, and now I'll be able to understand what the evil is, and I'll be able to understand what the, the good is, and I can, you know, avoid them. But living in the tree of life is not a step-by-step -step process. It's an art form. It's a, it's a commitment. Um, the, the way I was uh, thinking about it, one of the examples I want to give you is um, a paint by numbers. Has anybody ever done a paint by numbers? Maybe, maybe, maybe paint by numbers, color by numbers, right? You, you have this like, it's a blank piece of paper, and there's lines of where and numbers, and like, great. Now I know that number two is this blue color, and number four is this blue color, and then you have, and then, and then you take your time, and you paint it or you color it, and you're like, wow, I'm an artist, <laughs> right? But what if I hand you a blank piece of paper and said, here, do it again? You'd be like, there you go, there's my stick figure. At least me, for anyway. Um, but I, I know maybe other people are more artistic than I am, but uh, most of us in this room, maybe not maybe at home, but most of us in this room would probably end up with stick figures. Yeah. But when we look at the, the paint by numbers, right, um, we, those are designed and created for people to follow a step-by-step -step process. And, and so it's easy, and it, and it feels easy. You, you have, okay, well, number one is this color, number two, number three, number four, and you don't have to know where it goes either. It's just all right there. Now, so picture this, right? So, I don't know, Michelangelo, or some, no, uh, I don't know. Famous painter, fill in the blank, whoever you like. There's a lot. Right, you go to this person's house, and, 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 and they, they, they take a painting, they do it so it's a paint by numbers, you follow along, or a paint party, right? Anybody ever had a paint party? We had a paint party uh, with, with Tracy, and, and I know a lot of the ladies here may have gone, they went to it, and, and, and you know, so Megan was, was hosting it, right? So Megan had a painting, and everybody followed along. You, you did, did, did the colors, did the brush strokes, did, the, did all the stuff, did it look exactly like hers? No, that's okay. Right? So, so there's a person who, who, who knows what to do, and it's an art form. Even though there's a step-by-step -step process of what she was doing with you guys, and whoever was here, or if you were at a different paint card party, there, there's this process. And, and you say, okay, well, here's step number one. Here's color number one. Here's step number two, color number two. And then you follow it, and then, and then it looks very good. Maybe not the same as the person who originally did it, but they look pretty good. But then, then you go home, you think, I am an artist. Look what I painted, right? I was a part of a paint party once. I painted this like Christmas tree in like in the nighttime when there was, there was snow everywhere. And I followed along. And it didn't look like the one that the person painted, but it looked okay. And if I try to do it on my own, it looks worse again. And if I try again, it looks worse again. And if I try again, it looks worse again. So, what does it mean to live a life of forgiveness? It's not a step-by-step -step process, because if we try to follow the step-by-step-by-step -step -step process, it's not ever going to be the masterpiece that we see from somebody else. It's never going to be as good as maybe the one time that we did it. But it's a lifestyle, because when, when, we, when we find how to, how to paint our own forgiveness, in our lives, then we're able to do it. And it's not going to look the same as someone else's. But that's okay, because who knows that every single person is different. I'm different, you're different. The problems that we create are different. The problems that other people, the way we get offended is different. The people that we offend is different. And so all of these things all end up being very different. So if you try to have a one fix for everything, then, well, how come when I apologized this way to that person yesterday, they're fine with it, but today they still hate my guts? Or I can't believe what they said because that person offended you. So living a living a life style of the forgive of art of the forgiveness, I believe, needs to start with us. It's so important that it starts with us because if we if we don't live a life we've been, we know we are forgiven, then we're going to not be able to forgive others. 
Uh, so the first place I want to look at is in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Now I'm going to look at two different verses in, chapter, in Isaiah, but it's so important that if we're looking at art of forgiveness, we start with ourselves. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. So, so all of chapter 1, if you know much about Isaiah, I like Isaiah a lot. If you know much about Isaiah, he's, he's often telling people, hey, you've messed up. Hey, you've messed up. Now you're in captivity. I told you you were going to be in captivity. You didn't listen to me. You messed up. Forgive, you know, and then, and then they come out of it, and then they go back into captivity. And so God is speaking to Isaiah and saying, hey, you've messed up. And so verse 18 says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your skin, sins are like scarlet, they shall be washed as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Does anybody believe that? Anybody thankful for that? Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. I really like this beginning part. Come now, let us settle the matter or reason together. Has God ever talked to you that way? Listen. You know, we're, we're praying, we're seeking God. God, I, I, I need something. Come here. Let me tell you. Come here. Let me settle the matter. Because there's an argument, right? There's always there's conflict that's going on. And that's where we have these problems with being offended and, and, and offending others. Because there's conflict. There is a matter that is a problem. Let's reason together. What's the problem? The problem is that we have messed up. But let's settle the matter. And so it, earlier in chapter 1, Isaiah is, is, is speaking from the Lord. And, and God is saying that, you know, I, I see your, your, your offerings. I see your celebrations. I see that you're trying to live the law, but you are not doing what you're supposed to do because you are following the law. You're, 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 you're doing the burnt sacrifices the correct way. You're following the ceremonies the correct way. But in reality, your sins are still like scar because you've missed it. But because if you follow me, if you live in life, you will be as white as snow. You will be set free from these things. The next verse is Isaiah 43. Because Isaiah 43, verse 25. So jump a handful of verses. Isaiah's book is 66 chapters. And so he starts off with God saying, Yep, I will make you as white as snow. And then about halfway through, a little over halfway through, verse 25, it says, I, even I, am here, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sin no more. Anybody excited about that? Amen. Remembers your sin no more. So, so. A lot of times when we think about forgiveness and we think about offenses and we think about sin and the, the mistakes we've made and all that kind of stuff, what do we do? We think about the things that we have done. But God said, I remember your sin no more. I cast your sin as far as the east is from the west. God doesn't want us to live thinking Focusing on those things that we've messed up, those things that we've we've, we've made mistakes. Because um, I, th there's another analogy, right? So he, he blots out our sins and he remembers it no more. And he, even though we're like scarlet, we become white as snow. Okay, think about it this way: Has anybody ever had a hot dog or a, or a hamburger with ketchup on it? You ever worn a white shirt? <laughs> you ever eaten that thing and you're just like, oh, oh no, not again. You got that ketchup on your shirt or on your pants. And you thought, man, it's there. I don't know, maybe you were able to take it out, maybe you weren't. But, but there's a stain, right? There's a blemish. And, and, and so you have this problem, this thing going on, on you, and, and, and you can see it. And it's, 
it's a mistake and you feel embarrassed and oh maybe maybe you, you now you have to go to church and there's this thing on you and you feel embarrassed but it's all good it's fine no condemnation here. but or maybe it's right out there you just spill jelly on yourself and came in here now but a lot of times we feel embarrassed and and, and shame and man, like man I, be a bit like, like a child and you, you feel feel low and you feel sad. But God God doesn't see it that way. Right? Maybe maybe we were able to maybe we were able to take that stain out and you washed it and became white again. But you remember. A lot of times we remember those things. And so these two things that, that we've been talking about on and off a lot of times is the conviction and condemnation. And I believe that that too often, too for too long, too many Christians, too many in the church have focused so much on the, the condemnation of the sin and the problem, those stain, that that mustard or ketchup that got on you, and you're like, see, you did. You see, you gotta do better. Maybe you shouldn't just never eat hot dogs, never eat hamburgers again. Just don't eat it, because if you never do it again, you'll never have that stain again. Okay. But isn't that more condemnation? It's, it's remembering the embarrassment, remembering the shame, remembering the, oh, I just felt so bad. But conviction is what the Holy Spirit does. Living in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is condemnation. No matter how good you are, no matter how clean you got your shirt, no matter how, how, how much better, how much you've earned, all the things, all the stains, the problems, the sin that you had in your past, they just keep coming back because you can never measure up to good enough for God. The tree of life is conviction. The Holy Spirit convicts us. And what the difference is between condemnation and conviction, conviction says, use a plate, use a napkin. Conviction helps us for the next time. God says, you, know, I, you made this mistake. You did this thing that was, that was sinful. You made this, this problem. Here's how to do better next time. Right? As parents, um, that's how you teach your children, your grandchildren. Right? You don't just say, never do that again. Maybe you said because I said so sometimes. But often, you say, don't do that again, and here's how you do better, right? Don't throw your clothes on the floor and hang them up, or whatever it may be, right? How to do it better, that's conviction. The Holy Spirit wants to, to share conviction with us because our sins, though they were like scarlet, are as white as snow, and God does not remember the sin or the shame or the guilt anymore. He has cast it as far as the east is from the West. But have we? Just because God has cast your sin as far as the East is from, and the East is from the West, often we pick it back up and we're like, well, see, I remember. Maybe God doesn't. I remember. And then we put that, con that condemnation on ourselves. The art of forgiveness must start with a blank canvas. It has to be something completely blank. It has to be something as white as snow. You cannot make a masterpiece with something that's not first clean. If there's a stain on it or a problem on it, how are we supposed to paint the Mona Lisa? there's mustard or ketchup or something that was there it was wiped off but you can still see it a little bit there's a problem there there's we're, we're not clean but but in Romans 8 1 see God uh, it says therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus amen amen now there is no condemnation those things that that, that you feel like well see I I'm only a sinner saved by grace. Aren't you a child of God? Now you're co-heirs with Christ. 
You are not, not, not just a lowly, dirty, gross person. You are white as snow. Your sins have been blotted out. God has forgiven you and cast your sins as far as the east is from the west. He remembers them no more. But do we keep that on there? Do we keep putting that back on here because we feel like, well, maybe I need you. Because sometimes those offenses, those things that either we've done and we've messed up or other people have done and they've messed up, it's a, it's a protection thing. It's a wall that we build up. If we, if we keep this here, we remember it, then it will be protected if somebody else tries to. It's so important. Romans 5, 8 also. I love 5, 8. But God demonstrated his, his own love for us in this. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. When we talk about forgiveness, we talk about we are forgiven. A lot of times we, we focus so much on the that we, we need to be forgiven that we forget that while we were still sinners. While we were still sinners in our past, in our today, and in our forever. Those sins, those mistakes, those things that maybe that we offended someone or someone offended us, those things, how can we find real forgiveness? And while the problem is going on, Christ died for us. There is now no those who are in Christ Jesus. There is so much that sometimes when we when we allow ourselves to get so consumed with the thinking and dwelling on, on the past problems, past mistakes, we will never make we will never be able to live a life not offended. Live a life of real forgiveness. Galatians 5 and 1, and so this is kind of the, the theme verse for this whole thing. If it is, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free, stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened by the yoke of slavery. And what is that slavery? It's that stain, it's that blemish, those, those yokes. Are we free to be forgiven? Are you truly free to be forgiven? Because Adam and Eve were in the garden, right? So Adam and Eve were, are, are kind of the basis and the, 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 the central characters of this whole idea. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life. Before they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they were naked. They were not ashamed. They lived life. They were simply innocent before God. But in Isaiah, it says that he blots out our sins. He changes us from scarlet to white. That means we are truly free. It is for freedom that we have been set free. Stand firm that not letting ourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. What is slavery? Slavery is the step-by-step -step rules that we like to put on ourselves, that we like to put on other people. It's those, 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 that process of, okay, well, you know, here's, here's the measuring stick, and, and, and so I'm, I'm always trying to earn forgiveness, trying to earn salvation, trying to earn, and they have to earn for me too. And when that happens, that's why we get offended. We get so offended because somebody says something, and well, they didn't measure up to my standards. See, I am here, and they're here, and they did that, and I can't believe they said that. And sometimes, I mean, it happens all the time, right? We get offended. You know, just being married. They comment, and you're like, well, I offended again. Or, oh, I feel offended. It's easy to be offended. But it's because we have this yoke of slavery, this, this measuring rod that we feel like we and others don't measure up to. But when we're in real freedom, Jesus Jesus preached all over, right? And, and it's interesting, in Nazareth, right? So Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was the place where he was not able to do 
many miracles, and he's on he's on. Nobody wanted to listen to him because they thought and they couldn't get past what? Well, just a little carpenter boy. They couldn't get past that he was more than the measuring stick they had put on him. Because of that, they did not have freedom to, to see miracles. And, 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 and other people, Jesus is preaching to them, and, 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 and they kind of like lead him, they, they kind of push him, and they try to shove him off a cliff. Because he was not measuring up to what they thought. Whenever we have a measuring stick, or this, this idea of you have to be a certain way, everyone is going to fail. True freedom comes when all we do is rely on Christ to be our forgiveness, to be our salvation, to be our one to get over offenses, to be everything for us. And know that when we do that, when we rely on Him, when we surrender everything to Him, He truly does forgive us. Not in a way of, well, <clears throat> I guess you, you said you're sorry, so you got it right now. But five minutes from now, when you have that mean thought, or you, or, or somebody says, you know, you might turn and somebody is there and they might give you a hand gesture. It happened to me the other night, right? Like I turn and somebody zoomed past me and they're all like, yeah! And I was like, Jesus loves me. <laughs> I think I know, I think you know what the hand gesture I'm talking about, right? But, but then you feel these, feel these anger and like offended. And, and are you going to let that sink in and, oh, I can't believe it. Where's your forgiveness? Right? Everybody needs forgiveness. For it is for freedom that Christ has set you free. So are you willing to not be offended? Are you willing to give up your right to not be offended? And a lot of times we, we believe it's our right. But Jesus wasn't offended when people tried to push him off the cliff. Jesus wasn't offended when they crucified him. What did he say? Father, forgive them. Exactly. And then, okay, well, you know, Jesus is a hard standard to live by. How about Stephen in Acts? Stephen is a guy who's a lot less known because he dies pretty early on, right? Stephen is there and he's telling people about Jesus. And people got upset. They got offended because they, he was not measuring up to their standards. And so they're stoning this man. And he said, I'm going to live against him. Stephen, too, is, is saying, you know what? I'm not offended. I recognize that you are just struggling. You are in the yoke of slavery and you don't know. Too many people are, are are enslaved to their own uh, hurt, enslaved to their own sin, enslaved to their own misguided understandings of the world, and they don't even know. Let's not be the people who get offended. Let them be the people who get offended. And then when, when, when they're so offended, who's the one who gives real freedom? Christ. Let's be the people who share Christ with them. So, in order to live a life of the art of forgiveness, we must start from the place that says you are forgiven and you are free. Amen? Yeah. Isn't it great to be forgiven and free, knowing that, that yes, yes, you, you had problems in your past, and yes, you will probably have problems in your future, but you know what? All of your sin is blotted out. The things you did yesterday, the things you might do right now, the things you might do tomorrow, all of it is blotted out and forgiven and set free because Jesus paid it all. Amen. Like the song. Jesus paid it all. We are a blank canvas. Holy Spirit, paint a masterpiece on my canvas. Paint a masterpiece. I don't want to let my, my misguided concepts of, of this or that stain your canvas. I want to be a blank slate. Amen. Holy Spirit, you do the work. And then from there, 
Colossians 3.13 says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you have grievances or offended against someone, forgive as... What's it say? Forgive as... So what did the Lord do for you? He blotted out your sins. He made you as white as snow. He made you a blank canvas. It's so easy. To start, well, see they did this. Or see they did that. And a lot of times it's the closest to us are the ones that we have the hardest time doing that. So if the Lord forgave you in this way, he said, your sins are like scarlet, but I have made them as white as snow. I have blotted out your sins. I remember them no more. Can we actually do that for someone else? Because that's what it says. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. So are we offended? Let's let go of the offense. Because it's going to come. Jesus, who was perfect, offended people. Because a lot of times we we may offend people on purpose, but it also happens that we get offended accidentally. Everybody been offended accidentally or you offended someone accidentally? You said something you're like, oh, actually, that's not even really what I meant. I'm really sorry. Uh, I said a thing and you took it in a way that was a very accidental offense. Are we really able to offend or not offend someone like that? So my mother-in-law, and I was told by my wife, apparently she is quoting Bob Ross. Anybody know Bob Ross? All right, so my mother-in-law is an artist, and Bob Ross is an artist. And so she teaches classes. So she says that there's no such thing as mistakes, only happy accidents. Anybody ever heard that before? So in the step-by-step -step process, there's going to be 100% there will be mistakes. Anybody like taking a test, you got like a test of like 150 questions, or you go to work and there's, there's a process, and a lot of times you might miss one or something, because it's a process. But if it's a happy accident, then, okay, well, I'm painting my life of forgiveness. Holy Spirit is working on me, and, and maybe mine doesn't look like the Mona Lisa, but you know what? It's beautiful, because the Holy Spirit is not the one who makes mistakes. We don't, when we're allowing him to be, be our painter, be our guide, the one who shapes our heart, shapes our life, we are not making mistakes. We're only making happy accidents. Oh, I didn't realize if I did this. Then it, I didn't realize that was a way to show I'm sorry or show my forgiveness. I didn't realize that when I start doing this, because we're all different. Right? As I said in the beginning, I'm a different person than you, you're a different person than me, and, and your misguided thoughts are different than my misguided thoughts. And we all have misguided thoughts, but it takes an art. When we allow ourselves to not think that, oh wait, we made a mistake, oh, it's a happy accident. It's a place to grow. Though your sins are like scarlet, they are as white as snow. Conviction says, hey, you messed up, but let's take that mess up right here. We'll turn it into a little happy treat. As Bob Ross says, right? Yeah, you kind of messed up over there, but let's, let's make it a little cloud. It's a happy accident. A lot of the times, the, the, the sin that, that, that gets so stuck in us or the offenses that we have you know, with, with others or ourselves, the Holy Spirit can easily turn that into a happy little treat. But it takes us willing to not be offended and let go of the offense and ask for forgiveness and seek forgiveness and be the first one to always show forgiveness. Forgiveness builds bridges. Whereas offenses build walls. Sin and condemnation build walls, but forgiveness and conviction build bridges. Because just like that stain, right, using a plate for your hot dog or a napkin for your hot dog is not never eating it again. It's doing it better. Building a bridge to the other side of the, I don't know how to do this. 
I don't know where I should go with this, but I will build a bridge instead of building walls. Jesus said, for if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive their sins, your heavenly Father will not forgive you your sins. That is some pretty strong words. Pretty, pretty strong words because we, we enjoy our offenses sometimes. We may not say we enjoy them, but we do. Because like I said, it's, it's, it's a wall, it's armor, it's a shield. Whatever you think, whatever you want to say it's like. It helps us to feel safe. But if we don't forgive others, our Heavenly Father won't forgive us. We talked about Jesus died for what all of our sins. God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Though your sins are like star, they will be as white as snow. But apparently, we need to forgive others. Because if we don't, God does not forgive us. That is very, very strong words. But it's important that we think about that. Because when we're, when we're allowing the Holy Spirit to paint our, our art of forgiveness, our life of, of surrender, our life of forgiveness, do we want it to look like a big, messy, nasty spot? Or do we want it to look like the beautiful canvas that God has created us to be? We must live a life of forgiveness. That's why I ask again, have you ever been offended? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Me too. Living a life of the art of forgiveness will allow you to not be offended. It will allow you to be a person who, when those offenses come, I can easily and quickly move over that bridge. Right? Water bridge. Because those offenses will always come. We will offend people. People will offend us. Why? Because we live in a sinful world. But it's important that when that happens, we don't just say, well, that was a mistake. And we messed up. We say, oh, Holy Spirit, how do we make that a happy little tree? Or how, Holy Spirit, how do we make that? How do we reconcile? How do we reconnect? How do we, what is, what is the next step? How do we make this better? And not living in the offenses. Living in the art of forgiveness is not a step-by-step -step process. It's not a process that, that says, well, you have to do this, you have to do that, because, you know, so, so step one of offense with your wife, step one. Buy flowers. Step two, say you're sorry and hand flowers. Step three, you know, give her a kiss. Is that going to work every single time? Maybe, but how about how many wives would be okay with that every single time? No, probably not. Right? It's it's not a process like that. It's a relationship, and it's about our relationship with Christ. When our relationship with Christ is is stronger than our offenses, is stronger than our need to be right all the time. That's when we're living in life, giving tree, or producing fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Forgiveness is where it starts. But we must be willing to start by recognizing that God truly forgives us. So why do we keep putting that back on? Why do we keep putting that fairly shirt back on? Why do we keep putting those, those embarrassing, shameful things back on us? Yes, we can learn from our mistakes, and the Holy Spirit will teach us how to learn from our mistakes. But the Holy Spirit does not condemn us for those mistakes, for those things that we have done. 
he says, you are as white as snow, as white as this. Can I have the worship team come up? Don't allow your sin or someone else's sin to prevent you from being able to be the masterpiece that God wants you to be. Don't allow those things that, that, that get into our heart, get into our mind to, to change our thinking. So, I, I've been saying this whole message that this is not a step-by-step -step process. So I was, I was asking the Lord, well, okay, if it's not a step-by-step -step process, how, how can I encourage people to actually start doing this? <clears throat> so I, I, I want to I encourage you that this week, ask the Holy Spirit to shine light and truth on the way you view yourself, the way you forgive or don't forgive yourself, and how you view and forgive or don't forgive other people. Because the Holy Spirit is the one who gives you the blind canvas. The Holy Spirit is the one who shows you, oh, this little mess up over here, that's how we fix this. This little mess up over here, that's how we fix it. And it becomes not a mess up, but a happy accident. Because maybe the way we have been viewing other people is out of condemnation. Maybe the way we're viewing ourselves is out of condemnation. But the Holy Spirit is the God of truth, the God of light, and, and He is the one who will illuminate those things in our hearts and minds. So ask the Holy Spirit this week to share and to give you understanding so that you can truly feel on the blank canvas and innocent before God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you paid it all. There is nothing that can separate us from the love you have. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you show and you illuminate those, those things in our hearts and our minds, not, not to create a step-by-step -step process of how to move past hurts and issues and sin, Lord God, but, but to illuminate those things that we need to surrender, those things that we need to ask for forgiveness from. First, from you, Holy Spirit, minister your truth about who we are and whose we are. And Father God, the truth about others and how we can be the light to those who are offended, those who have not been freed from the bondage of slavery and death. Lord God, help us to be, to be your church, to be your people, to be innocent and truly surrendered completely and fully to you. In Jesus' name.
So I got these because you're invited back to church this Easter. Now I have a handful of other signs that look just like this. If you would like to take one and put it in your yard, I also uh, got little cards that say the same thing because I believe that this Easter, you know, we this is a like a full year of of COVID, right? been since last Easter, or about then, and it started. Let's invite people back. It's time to be back in church. It's time to, to, to be here. It's, it's time to celebrate who God is. God's going to do something wonderful. This, this year, when we have a, 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 a friend, a guest ministry, who's going to come, and he's going to share a uh, very gospel, salvation, Holy Spirit driven message. So if you know someone who needs the love of Jesus, who needs to hear a salvation message, invite them. I encourage you. I, I believe we we are we are ready. Are we ready? God is going to start doing something amazing. Let's be the church that, that, that brings people back. Let's be the church that that encourages, that uplifts, because it's all about God. It's all about God and what He did on Easter. So maybe it's those people who we've been offended by. Maybe those are exactly the right person that needs a little bit of forgiveness and an invite to church and say, hey, you know what? I did have a problem with you. Why don't you sit next to me on, on Easter Sunday because we got to get over offenses. God blotted out our sins and blotted out everyone who asks. Lord Jesus, I ask that you, you continue to give us understanding, give us wisdom uh, to know who you are, Lord God. For Easter, we're asking, we're, we're, we're expecting something amazing that you're going to do through our hearts and through our, our minds and, and through um, what, who's going who's gonna to come for? We ask, Lord Jesus, that you continue to uh, help us to see, see your truth through forgiveness, through letting go of offenses, through uh, truly repenting and then seeking you always and surrendering all of our lives to you, Lord God. We want to be that canvas, that blank slate, that Holy Spirit, you are the one who paints a masterpiece through us. It's not what we can do how we can follow good enough, Lord Jesus, but it is only through surrendering and finding real forgiveness through you so that we are truly free and forgiven. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are doing an amazing work in our hearts, in our minds, and in this church, Lord God. Thank you for anybody who's watching. I ask that you, you be there with them, Holy Spirit, uh, ministering truth and peace and comfort as they may be on bed rest or the recovery or wherever they may be, Lord God, your Holy Spirit is there ministering health and healing to them and encouragement. Encouragement to get over offenses. Encourage, <clears throat> encouragement to, to not be the people who offend people on purpose. Thank you, Lord God, for your forgiveness. Thank you for your salvation. Father God, we ask for the, the offering. We, we ask that you, you continue to multiply Continue to, to show us the best way to be the church and to, to share what you have given us with our community, with our church family, with everyone we meet, Lord God, so we can be a light in the darkness. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.